Hey guys, this is iPiano here, back for episode 3 of So Wizard. Last episode, I built a house. Not much going on there. This episode, I'm planning to start out on some of the Tinker's Construct stuff and show you how that works. So, uh, just so you know, in the interim, I started up a small farm here, because I know I'm going to need seeds eventually. And I built this little, this little structure here. And uh, this goes down underground, and there's no light down here. Because I am working on... I know I said that uh, these orberry bushes are generally pretty dumb, but I decided to go for it because I couldn't find any aluminum anywhere, and I knew I was going to need it for this video. So I've got some aluminum orberry bushes down here, and uh, the reason it's so dark is because they only grow whenever there's no light. So uh, that's why I've got all these floorboards here. These are half slabs, that way monsters won't spawn down here. Also, you may have noticed that there's someone talking to me. This is uh, actually going to be one of my main competitors, so uh, let me just respond to him quick. Alright, there you go. So, what we're going to need is we're going to be setting up a smeltery. So, to set up a smeltery, we're going to need a lot of this stuff that I've got here, actually. We need the uh, casting basin, casting table, and some seared bricks. And then I've also got some more seared bricks in here that I haven't crafted yet, because I'm going to use those for some specific items. I'm also going to need some glass, so I'm going to go pick up some sand quick and uh, get that smelting while I work on the rest of this. Also, you might have noticed that the uh, other Tinker's Construct tools that I was using before are no longer with me. Uh, I've still got them, but I am choosing against using them because I needed iron level tools, and those are not iron level tools. Also because the uh, bronze shovel had broke, and I have no way of creating bronze right now as that requires the smeltery, which I'm going to make in this video. Alright, so we've got some glass. Uh, I'm going to go decide where I want to put this, this casting for this smeltery. I'm thinking right... Right where I am right now will be good. So I'm going to clear out this section here. And the way the smeltery works is you have a large um, brick structure that's hollowed out in the middle. And then you can put uh, you can put metals inside of it. And it'll melt them down. And then um, you'll have liquid metal inside of your smeltery, which you can then pour out into molds and stuff that you can use. So. We're going to start off with a base here. I think I'm going to go... probably 4x4. Four four. You can make these structure pretty much any size you want. Uh, it honestly doesn't matter, actually. You know what, let me put that down a layer. It doesn't matter. Um, I think the smallest you can have it is is 1x1, one one, actually. You can have a 1x1 one one smeltery, which you know, isn't very useful because the number of blocks that you're allowed to melt at a time is the uh, space inside of the smeltery. So you can have more than one block melted at a time, but um, it takes a while to melt a specific block, so you can only have a certain number actually being melted at a time. So I'm just going to put in this uh, bottom layer here. And then we go with an out, an outside layer, and I don't actually need to fill in the corners, so I'm not planning to do that. There we go, outside layer. And this structure can be built up as high as you want it to. So I'm going to build it up a couple more layers, and I'm actually going to leave this spot open, and I'm going to leave this whole side open, and I'll show you why in a minute or two. And then, <laughs> I'm actually going to leave a couple more spots open. Um, I'll leave that side open. Yeah. And I'll fill up, open up this, or I'll fill in this side. There we go. And I'll put in another layer here. I'll leave this side open. And I'll show you why. So that's this is gonna be where my control is. And I'm gonna leave these open for glass. And this side's gonna be where my output goes. So I'm gonna head back inside. Hopefully be able to skip the night. Alright, so 
so. Got that. And let's go see if my if my glass is done, because I'm going to need that next. So now I'm going to be crafting some specialized objects for this structure. So we're going to need... What are we going to need? We're going to need... One controller. Why do I have... Oh, I have this book. You get a book. Okay, so throughout the uh, Tinker's Construct mod, you get books. Uh, you start out with this book in your inventory, and then once you've created specific items, you get the second book, and then you'll get the third book when you start making a smeltery, and eventually you'll get the fourth book, which is your weaponry book. There's actually a fifth book, which I don't know how to get it, but you can craft it using the weaponry book. <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, I'm going to put some stuff in this attached inventory so I have space in my inventory. This uh, Tinker's Construct bench is really nice because you can access the attached inventory. So, I've got my controller. Next, I need... I believe this is the recipe, yeah. Okay, this is a tank which I can use, I can uh, put lava in, and the lava will then be used in the smelting of ores. And then I left space for a couple of windows. Yeah. And I think that should just about do it. So let's go plug this stuff in and see what we got. So since I've only got stuff out for got stuff for two windows. I'm going to put them right on the corner. So, shoot, I'm going to need more seared bricks. Okay, so that's where, that'll be my tank. That'll be my controller. I'm going to turn off auto refill because that's annoying. All right, so we got my controller and right now it doesn't show much. Okay, so then we got a glass right there, and there we go, the smeltery controller is enabled. So it looks like I've got one, two, three, four, by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spots. Eight times four. Oops. Yeah, that's right. So that's one spot for every area that's in here, and then it doesn't register the top layer because that layer is not complete yet. So I can fill in these blocks here and I'm gonna need some more stuff to be able to finish up here so the recipe for this is really simple you just need sand some gravel and some clay so then you take the sand and gravel and clay and you put it together it's a uh, unshaped crafting and you get root Grout? Grout? I don't know. But it's got a nice little reference to the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. So then you just take the grout and you go and throw it in a furnace. And I'll wait for that to get done. Alright, got some seared bricks. So, next up I'm going to take those bricks and... I'm going to make a couple of, what are these called? Smeltery drains. So I left four spots for those, so we're going to make four drains. Then we need to make four faucets. And I don't have enough. I can make two, though, and that's enough for now. Uh, yep. So we just take these faucets and put them right on here, like so. And then we put on our drains right on the, or our faucets right on the drains. And then underneath the faucets, we can put on the uh, casting tables and casting basins. And the casting tables are used for if we want to make a uh, there we go. if we want to make a specific item using a mold. And the casting basin is used for if we want to if we want to make a block of metal. So now I'm going to take my lava. I picked up some lava while I was gone and just put that right in there and you can see it'll fill up and then to smelt some items we just take the ore I've got some ore berries here, that works and a backpack uh, I need copper I need my copper no, aluminum brass how do you make aluminum brass? so there's a couple of different alloys you can make and to do that you just put you just melt the different kinds of metal in there 
Yeah, so it's a three aluminum per one copper. And I don't think I have enough aluminum. Five ore berries will give me one bar of metal. One bar of metal isn't enough, because I need three bars of metal. So, hold on just a second while I go out and find some more aluminum. Alright guys, so while out looking for aluminum, I came across a couple of pretty interesting things, so I figured I'd show you. First of all, I found this big old honkin' tower. This is a battle tower. And basically how those work is each level has a couple of monster spawners, and you work your way up to the top and get treasure all the way up, and then when you get to the top, there's the boss, and you kill the boss, and the tower destroys itself. So you can get some pretty good loot from those things, I'll probably go through one eventually. Next up, I found this. Uh, which is a crashed meteor site. So we've got a mod here called Fallen Meteors and uh, basically meteors fall from the sky during the night and uh, they can land anywhere that is a certain distance away from the player. So uh, I actually I found a different crash site. There's there's four kinds of meteors and I found one of the uh, normal meteor kind and so I mined some meteor ore because I need that to make a uh, meteor protector which will protect my land from meteors falling on it, which, you know, I would really prefer, because they kind of just destroy the landscape, as you can see. And the last thing I wanted to show you is that this is one of those ore biomes. So there's a big old mountain here, and there's just ore all over it. And hopefully I'll be able to find some aluminum on it. We'll see. Um, I know it's pretty common to find deposits of aluminum gravel ore, actually, in the overworld. So we'll see if I can find one of those while I'm on. Oop, 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 oop. Nope, that's a, that's gold gravel ore. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to find some aluminum shortly here. It seems like it's getting pretty dark. I'll just have to brave the night and hope I don't die. So uh, yeah, I'll let you guys know once I've found some aluminum. All right, I spent my entire entire night running for my life, but I managed to do it. Picked up some aluminum ore, so I'll be able to use that to make some aluminum brass to make some caps. So I've got my 10 aluminum ore berries and my copper. So what we'll do is we'll throw in the aluminum ore and the berries and these will all smelt and then I'll throw in, <laughs> let's see, it's three aluminum to one copper. So probably just one copper and that should give me three bars of aluminum brass which I can use to make a couple of molds. And I'll let that go and then I'm also going to go grab some iron that I can use and uh, smelt them in into some tool items. Alright, so I got my iron. So, I'm going to go throw that into the furnace also. Oh, something crashed. Alright, I'm back. Not exactly sure what happened there. Uh, something got a little bit messed up with my... Oh with my uh, smelting of aluminum, but uh, as you can see, everything got smelted properly now, and I've got my aluminum brass, 960 millibuckets, which I believe is the same as three ingots, but I'm not sure. Uh, maybe it's more than three. We'll find out when I try making some stuff. Anyway, I've got my aluminum brass, which is what I care about. So, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna head over and I'm going to check for patterns. I think the first thing I'm going to make is probably a pickaxe, because, you know, those are useful and everybody kind of needs one. Uh, it looks like I don't have a pickaxe head pattern, so what I'll do is I'll go get my... Nope, I'll make some patterns. So to make a blank pattern, you take just some wood and some sticks. and you get some patterns. And then you go over to the stencil table and you put the patterns on the stencil table. And I'm going to make a pickaxe head. And I'm also going to make an axe head and a shovel head. So I can make all three of those into some nice tools that I'll be able to continue using hopefully throughout the entire series. So next, oops, don't need those yet. Next, we take those over to the part builder and we throw those on. And then we just make parts out of whatever we happen to have lying around. So I'm going to use stones to have. So I'll make a stone shovel head, stone axe head. And those can go in the uh, in the uh, pattern chest right next door. And a stone pickaxe head. 
Okay, so that's what I need. So now I take those out to my smelter and I stick them right on the casting table and I need to use the one that's got a faucet. And then I open up the faucet and I'll go with the pickaxe first because I don't know how much I got. And I got... I got a pickaxe head pattern. So then I can use that to make pickaxe heads. So I'm going to throw in my iron, then it can start smelting. And I'm going to make some more patterns. Okay, so we got a shovel head. And an axe head. And it looks like it takes 144 millibuckets, which means I have enough to make a couple of more patterns. So hopefully, well, I'll be able to make some more of those. Okay, so it's time to sleep, and it looks like my uh, competitor has a bed, so we can sleep. All right, it's morning. Back to the tinkering. So, uh, got a couple more faucets, and I put in a chest here to store my uh, patterns here. And I also, my iron melted, so I have 36 bars of mol molten metal. So I will take all three of these and cast each one. Oh, okay, so when you click those, it will automatically pour the one on the bottom. So to change what's on the bottom, you just click on the one you want instead. And I want molten iron. Oh, hey, there's a pig there. Well, if the pig falls into the vat, um, it'll die, obviously, because this is molten metal. And if the pig dies in the vat, then I get blood, actually, in the vat. And you can, you can actually use blood for some fairly interesting things, which is kind of gruesome and weird, but also kind of useful at the same time. All right, so we got our tool pieces. Next up, we got to head into our tinkle tinker table and see what we need. So. This is going to be the tool station. That's what I want. All right, so to make a pickaxe, we need a pickaxe head, which I've got, and a handle. And I'm just going to use a stick, I think. I don't want those. OK, so then we get a stick and some sort of binder. What's that piece? tool binding pattern. Okay, so now comes in book number two, Materials and You. So we read through this, and it tells you you can make all the, these, these different tools, basically. And it also tells you you can use materials. And each material that you use is going to have different effects on the resulting tool. So if you use iron, it's going to be more durable, but also slower to use because it's heavier. If you use cactus, going to be not as durable, but it'll be really fast because cactus is really light. And then there's extra modifiers, such as it'll mine faster the more broken it is, or it'll mine faster the less broken it is, and stuff like that. And then there's these things called modifiers. And basically what you can do is you can add stuff to the tool to make it better. So if you add a diamond, it gets extra durability, and the mining level goes up to level 3. If you add an emerald, you get half as much more durability. If you add redstone, it's faster. If you add moss, it's auto repair. So I'm definitely going to be putting moss on my tools. The only thing I would recommend not putting moss on is a bow, because then it'll repair while you're using it, and you'll have to put it down and pick it back up because the durability value changed on the tool. Um, and then, <coughs> okay, so you can add these modifiers. So if we use paper as part of our tool, it gives it the trait writable which means I can use an extra modifier. So for this little binder piece on the pickaxe, I'm going to use paper. Do I have paper? I can make paper. And that'll allow me to put on I guess, a couple of different modifiers, more than I will my other tools, because the other tools don't use this little binder, just the pickaxe. And I, I'm guessing this is the reason, because pickaxes are used more and they have a couple of extra modifiers you can put on them that are really not very useful on other tools. Alright, so we'll make our paper. And along with the Tinker's Mod, there's different values of items. So every item has the full item and then like the half item. So a full item of wood is a block, and a half item is a stick. Full item of cobblestone is cobblestone, and a half item is like a shard of stone, which you get when you craft items. So a full item of paper is actually a stack of paper. <coughs> so I'll take my stack of paper, and I'll put it on here, and I've got my tool binding pattern. And I get the paper binding, 
and two pieces of paper because it only uses half of the material. So then I get two pieces of paper that I can use for, for other things. So now I go back to the table, the, the tool table, and I put in my binder, and there you go. I get an iron pickaxe, which is writable and has reinforced form. Has mining speed of six, which is fairly fast. Higher speed is good. Durability is pretty low, but I plan on adding a diamond to it. Uh, and the mining level is redstone, which means I can mine redstone with it. So there we go. I have a iron pick, and the advantage there is that if it breaks, I can then stick it back on my tool table with a block of iron, and it'll uh, get get itself fixed up. Okay, so next up, I'm going to <coughs> make a shovel. I here's what I need. Shovel goes, yep, so I get a shovel, and it looks the same, but this is a tinker shovel, so I can use modifiers and stuff on it instead, and an axe. And there we go. Okay, so I will put my old tools in here just for now. Then I will take this mossy cobblestone and use it to make my ball of moss for the moss modifier. So then I can go to the tinker table and then I'll put my pickaxe on there, and along with the moss, and then it says oh, it went from four modifiers to three modifiers, and it adds the modifier of moss, which means it'll repair itself. And if I'm sending the little sunlight, it'll repair itself faster. So there we go. You've got these moss-covered tools. And then I've actually got a couple of diamonds hidden away, so I'm going to go grab those quick. And I'm just going to put one on my pickaxe because the other tools, their durability doesn't matter to me quite as much. So that'll add the diamond, and it allows me to mine obsidian instead and it gives it the durability of 500 plus what it was. So now I've got some pretty good tools there, and I plan to use those quite a bit. So now if we look at our smeltery, uh, I've still got a bunch of iron in here. So, to get it out, we can just pour it into these casting basins. And I hope I have enough. I should have enough. Yeah, I've definitely got enough. So 26 ing ingots, that'll give me at least two blocks of iron. So why did I put all my iron in the smeltery? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One, you can use it to smelt a lot of items at the same time, which is a lot more efficient than using a furnace. And two, using the smeltery actually doubles the amount of material that you get. So if I get, so these two blocks of iron here, that's just nine iron ores that I put in. And it looks like I've still got enough for one more. And then I'll have a couple of uh, ingots left over. And I can actually make molds for ingots and nuggets and pour them out that way, but I figure I'll just leave them into this, in the smeltery and I'll use them up eventually, later, hopefully. So that'll cool, and I've got three blocks of iron that I didn't have before. And I actually, I'm actually going to need four, because if we look through this materials in U-Book, it shows there's this tool called, um the lumber axe, which will chop down an entire tree at once. It's incredibly useful. But if I decide to take a look and see what I need to make it, it doesn't show up on this list. That's because I need an upgraded version of the tool station called the uh, tool forge, I believe. And to make that, I actually need four blocks of iron. So I've got some more iron, so I will go and smelt that quick and get myself another block of iron so that I can make one of these tool forges. And then I'll uh, show you guys <coughs> what it's like to have a lumber axe, and I think that'll be the end for this video. So, I'm gonna go grab my iron from my secret stash. There we go, 64 blocks of iron. And I'm just gonna throw that. Ooh, yeah, that should be enough lava. Throw as many as I can in. And if we look up here, you see there's all these blocks of iron up here and they are getting melted. So those will get melted, and then I will be able to uh, pour, well, some out into a mold. But I'm also going to want iron heads on these new tools I'm going to make. So I want the lumber axe head, and I also want mm, the large plate and the hammer head, because you can make a uh, you can make a mining hammer, which will mine a 3x3 three three square. Same, the excavator will, mi will uh, dig out a 3x3 three three square when you're digging with it. So, 
these will be some nice tools to have made out of iron. Oop, no, we've got to make them first. And these ones require a lot more material to make, so I don't know if I'll be able to make all of them with what I've got, but I'll, I'll give it a try and make what I can. So, these use eight material each to make. They're, they're pretty expensive. Like that. And I can use those to make molds. And it appears that Mike, my competitor, has an Eldric outside his door. And the Eldric are a part of the Thomcraft mod. And they actually come from these fancy obsidian pillars over there. So I'll have to watch out for that. Because I don't want one outside my door. They're pretty nasty creatures. They use magic and attack you with magic. And it's it's painful. It's really painful to fight those guys. So. Let's do this one first, because I believe all of them require those. And a broad axe, because the lumber axe is probably the most useful for me at this point. And I think I still have enough for both of the other ones. Uh, we'll see. I'll give it a go. It's 144. Do I have 144? I do have 144. Cool. So now I have all the molds. And I'll just go and throw these extra tool pieces in here. So I'm going to be making these really nice tools. Actually, do I still have enough for another mold? I don't. Okay, I was thinking about making the handles out of metal, but uh, I guess I'll just have to handle for, or have to uh, stand for probably stone handles, but we'll see. So, in order to make the tool forge, I need another block of metal, and according to my book, um, I'm going to need a large plate and a head, a tough binder, I'll make that out of paper. And for that one, I'm going to need two large plates in the head and another large plate in the head. So that's a, that's a lot of iron. Is that that much iron? Hmm, probably. Okay, so. Plate. Head. Oh, shoot. That poured out in the wrong spot. Okay, you know what? I'm going to just not have that anymore. Got to be more careful when I'm pouring multiple, multiple things out of here. There we go. Why did I pick up the head? I need that still. So... Put your head again. And we got a block of iron. So that's four blocks of iron. And we got two of these plates. We need four. Oh, don't need two of these. Oh well, I'll have two of these. And I can maybe use another one again later. Unfortunately, there's really no good way to salvage stuff once you've started pouring it out. Um, you can make a uh, another tank like this to store it in, but getting it in and out of the tank is really kind of difficult to do. So, do I have enough iron? Definitely have enough iron for another plate. So that goes in there. And I'm not going to need that, but I will. And the fourth plate. It is okay, done. So I used up a bunch of iron really quickly. Alright, so now we take my original tool station and let's see. Oh yeah, you can also turn them into flat versions of themselves, which are half slabs, but you can't stack them uh, very easily. So they're they're kinda useful. Let's see, what's the recipe for this? Uh your bricks, which I don't have. I should have known that was coming. Okay, so I can make two of them. I need two more uh, clay, so I'm going to need two sand. Please hold while I gather the necessary materials for my tinker table. Alright, there we go. So, I will take these. 
set down my other crafting table. Make some more bricks. There we go. And we take two bricks on the top, and we get a tool forge. And you can actually make the tool forge out of uh, any kind of metal or mineral, so you can get a blue one or a green one if you use diamond or emerald. Or, but uh, I don't necessarily know why you would do that. So here, now we've got the uh, new recipes. So first up, I want to make a lumber axe, which means I'm going to need a large tool rod and a large binder. And I don't have either of those, so large tool tough rod is what it's called. And I'll also need a couple more patterns. And large binder, which is a material cost of three. So I'm planning to make the material or the binder out of paper again, because that has been some nice uh, modifiers I can use. I uh, don't need that because I have a duplicate. Okay, so that'll go in there. And I'll get rid of this later. So now I've. That was the wrong thing, wasn't it? There we go. Tough rod. Supposed to be made out of stone. There we go. Well, now I've got a paper tough rod in case I ever decide to use that. Okay. The nice thing about this is you can save stuff and who knows, eventually you'll use it maybe. So, we put our different pieces on here. And we get a pretty ugly looking axe, but it has got a really slow, slow speed. Oh well, it chops down an entire tree. I can wait for an entire tree. Hey, I got an achievement. I wonder what that was for. Okay, so next up we got the uh, mining hammer. And I'll probably upgrade this eventually because it's a it's a pretty crappy hammer, all things, all things considered right now. And hey, he likes that I got that. Alright, and the shovel. So shovel head, pieces, binder, there's my other tool rod. There you go. No, I'm Alright, excavator. So, once we hit morning, I'll show you guys how these tools work. Alrighty. So, a while back, I planted a very, very large group of trees. Like, like a hundred trees. All in a big square. And they all grew in a big square. So, I can use this axe to hopefully chop down all of them at once. That's the idea, at least. Uh, Generally, this axe only works with things that are connected. Something's shooting me. That's a skeleton. I'm gonna go kill that skeleton. Skeletons in water. Not fun. Not fun. Oh, please. So these these guys took over my little obelisk here. Um, they're they're called the Crimson Cult, and if I get too close, they'll attack me, and they're really powerful. So I'm gonna stay away from them. Uh, okay. Anyway, back to the trees. So I believe what I can do is boom, and it's raining trees, and that used up like half of my axe, which is fine. Uh, because I get a lot of wood here that I can use for who knows what. This would have been really useful when I was building my house, actually. Um, oh, the drops. The apples are really nice to have, too. Boy, that filled up my inventory. Um, don't need that. What else do I need? Don't need that. But there you have it. That is one effective axe. Holy crap. Um, I'll just go around and replant all these. 
Actually, you know what? I'm just going to let them go because I don't think I'm going to need all of these. And look, some of them are already growing. Wow. So anyway, that's that. Um, no, don't ask me to chop down one of these redwoods. I've never tried, but I've heard that the results can be disastrous if you don't have a really, really fast computer. Uh, wait a minute. That one has iron bars in it? What the hell? Um, I'll have to go investigate that. I don't know why there's iron bars in that redwood tree. Well, anyway, that's all I've got for this episode. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. I think it might be a little long, so hopefully I'll be able to cut it down. Join me next time. Hopefully I'll get started with some actual magic, considering that this episode or this series is called So Wizard. You'd think I would have done some magic by now, but I haven't. However, I think I'll be ready next time, so see you then.